In the middle of the project, I actually went and dug through old notes to try to figure out where it came from, because it had been sitting in my head for a while. And uh, it was a sketchbook in 2006 with a list of dinners um, that are basically like a single a single guy dinner through trying to impress someone on their first date through uh, comfortable dating like going to the movies what dinner like simple dinners would be and then what the breakup meal is like or what a romantic meal is like just the idea that you could you could tell a life story and just see the plates uh, and it, I thought maybe it would be a live action thing or you know an illustration project I don't know but you never know what any idea is so it goes on the list just in, in a note-taking app that I have of potential potential ideas that you could do in the future. And then when the option to pitch comes up, you kind of look through your list of stuff that, like, oh, if there was a dog in that meal thing, there might be something interesting, you know, with the play of, you know, dog below table. There's like, there's like a status thing you could do with camera and the design of food seemed cool. And then playing around with that video, um, one second a day uh, app to... Like with that idea also kind of cemented that maybe there is something there in the quick edit and uh, I'm telling the story that way and it sort of evolves organically from there through pitching to development and other directors and the story trust to into something that it ends up being you know? and even through story once it's once it's greenlit and ready to go you still are evolving it and kind of finding where it ends up I've worked with Josh and Patrick for quite a few years now in lots of different roles and um, it was really quite a joy to watch them now taking their art to a new evolutional level and there's nothing like working with creatives you trust because it makes my job easier I don't need to be standing over there over their shoulders thinking how is this going to shape out I'm just I can go handle all the other things that are they shouldn't be worrying about um, so it was just it's fantastic and I'm grateful to them for bringing me back to Annecy again. <laughs> and, you know, but like, looking, such a gift. <laughs> looking back at Paperman, she's all, she was always like, well, it's a cucumber. Oh, right. Like, even when she was taking chances on us, like, I feel like she was able to manage the team like, in a calm way. And I think for us, and I don't know if I speak for you, but like, I feel like that's such a valuable asset to have the support that you need, but also like, something that's calm enough to like, allow you to make your mistakes and it's like okay I know I I own all of this and I'll live up to it but I think you're you're good at that so thank you I, oh but I'm on camera say, no less the last time I'm going to say this <laughs> and the first time I'm going to say this but, um, but it's, it is important to think about that thank you you want to tell a story with everything, you, all the tools that you have. So you, you figure out what your arc is going to be, and then you say, how can I make the camera tell this story? How can I make light tell this story? Um, the camera is locked down for most of the short, and uh, it only unlocks when he, when Winston uh, acts in a way that's a little above what a dog's intelligence should be, when it becomes a little more cinematic and magical then. So we made rules that... The lighting represents sort of his point of view of the food, and then the camera represents sort of the movie's um, sort of magic, uh, that it's kind of natural and still and normal at a certain point, and then becomes more out there and magical. And the food, if, if, it's, if it's good food, it's in light. If it's bad food, it's in the shadow. And if it's sort of the in the mix moment, it's kind of cut by the light. And you have all those tricks, so you might as well use them to accentuate the story as much as possible and get people to feel it in ways that um, aren't exactly obvious to the audience but they can kind of be brought along and emotionally uh, I love I love crazy cameras and stuff so it was it was really hard to be disciplined and say no the camera is not going to move at all until it needs to but I think it pays off because you notice it when it moves as being way more fun than the rest of the camera work so and there's something I, I'm glad people notice that stuff because it, it it is subconscious a little bit or it should be, but that people notice it is cool. You know, as an artist, you like you when you're evolving, you tend to take things that you think are working, and then you just get rid of things that maybe you've done before that you want to try something new and you add things to it. That's how I see like this film is that we've done some things on Paper Man that I think work really well, and there's no sense in like taking getting rid of that, but. There's also a different story to tell, and you have to understand what the story is first, 
uh, and what the intentions are with the story. So once I understood where he was going with it, you kind of know what what you need to add to it. Um, what we kept from Paper Man, I feel, was that flat sense that we all kind of like that um, it's a simplicity about showing and telling the story uh, that we really appreciated in Paper Man, so we wanted to have that. But what we added to this film is the sort of the video the aspect of film overlaid through that. We use a lot of shallow depth of field. Uh, we use uh, focal color. lenses. Um, use color. I, I'm getting there. Sorry. I'm getting there. <laughs> um, and uh, but you know, also using color as an emotional tool. Um, food is you know very important. So understanding what those colors are and being very specific about that. Uh, that's something that we were able to use to tell the stories. As artists, you have this set of tools, and you try to use everything you can to make the particular image. And for us, the goal of the image is more important than whatever technique it is to get there. And the technique is just, how can we make this happen by May? You know, like we need to make this amazing visual that we've tried, that this visual that we're trying to hit, this goal, it needs to happen with the artists that we have here in this amount of time. So your tools are just getting you to that. Um, so we had uh, the paper man tools and Meander available. We used them in the spots that were most needed in a little bit of the expression accentuation on the character's face. But we didn't. But the design of the the sh the, the world is a lot more shape and less line driven than paper man was. So we didn't need it nearly as much to make the image look finished. It was just about making the image look finished and beautiful, and the shapes being very specific. And I think. In Paper Man, the techniques that we were using in both are very, they're very good at being strong with your visual language and your value structure of every shot. And I think people react to the movie similar because of that a little bit, because the value structure in Paper Man, it's all value. And, and in this movie, we really planned out value structure very specifically. And I'm, I'm hoping that that's kind of what feels similar too, is that the yeah. compositions are, are tight uh, yeah, in I every mean, shot. There was a moment where Josh Staub, our visual effects supervisor, was like, come over to my office, I want to show you something. And he had taken all the color out of, of our show. And, he did? Uh, yeah, I didn't tell you this. But, um, and he, <laughs> I want to watch it. It's, it's awesome. And we were like watching it. And we were like, it, he's like, it's amazing how close the values look. To like Paper Man, like there's something that we learned, I think, from that. Just you force yourself when you work with black and white to be, be very conscious about value and structure and things. I think it really added to the show that once you put color on that, it makes it just that much more pleasing and appealing. Uh, I, so yeah, it was it was interesting to see that when Josh showed me, like yeah, look, this is like Paper Man, but for dogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> In the, in the value sense, but it was fun to see that. Yeah, to be able to see something from uh, an idea that isn't really solid, and then to have the help of so many great artists come in to like make it solid and finished is really great because it's very hard to clarify things to yourself just in your head or on paper with your own set of skill. But all our combined skill is way better than any individual, so that privilege is not lost on you at all at, at any time during the production of how uh, how much of an opportunity that is and uh, it's very lucky and it's very nice and you get a little spoiled because it's like what do you think what do you think what do you think all day but uh, you know I got to animate too on it so it's fun to actually do the asking and then actually do something and ask other people is this good does this fit in because you get on your own work you kind of lose that too um, you animate, you think it's great, and then you got to put it up against everyone else's work, just like everyone else. So, uh, it's kind of fun, but you know, after the whole process, you know, every step is really is really fun in a different way. So it's a neat process because nothing gets really, it's never boring because everything's different all the time. So yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah.